Hey guys, it's Mary and welcome to another episode of Ask Mary. You can ask me anything. Actually today I have three decor questions because it seems to be what you guys want to know most. But you can ask me anything. Question one. So this one comes from Sacha via Twitter. Hey Mary, which couch color could I choose here if I'm looking for a Scandinavian type decor? Love you. Love you too, Sacha. The definition according to Wikipedia. The term Scandinavian design emerged in the 1950s to describe design from the Scandinavian countries, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. It is a design movement characterized by simplicity, minimalism, and functionality. So basically that means the vibe is simple. A lot of white, a lot of white walls with kind of stark black differences that are sort of minimal, utilitarian feeling. Lots of raw woods, gray works really great here. If you want to layer it on, because thinking of like Scandinavia was cold, there's sheepskins, there's blankets, there's pillows, but they're all a very neutral palette. So thinking of the snow outside and it's just white and white and white with warm woods, even firewood becomes sort of part of the design. Thinking of like Ikea, right, is definitely a good example of Scandinavian design. Now they've kind of gone even further because they're such a mega store, but there's so much that's rooted there because it's a Swedish company. So as far as doing a sofa, I would do white, beige, gray, or black. You want to stick to neutrals. Now you can get into the tweeds, you can get into kind of nebbier fabrics, you can do gray with sort of white in it, but you want to keep it super sleek. So going back to how Ikea is so great for Scandinavian design, you don't want anything to be head to toe. Ikea, when it's head to toe, tends to look inexpensive, but you can inexpensively bring in some of those designs to create a really sort of more expensive, sort of modern look. So if you apply this simple philosophy of sofas, you can literally get it anywhere. You can get one custom made, you can go to CB2, they have a lot of really great options. West Elm, Ikea of course, and I mean it's really just about a simple, simple sofa. So I would say black, white, gray, or beige depending on how clean you can keep it. Question number two comes from Emma via Twitter. Help! I want a chic, modern, and elegant bedroom, but I have antique furniture. Help on making them more modern slash stylist. Stylist. <laughs> modern slash stylish. I personally love that look. I think combining antiques with modern is like the ultimate and cool. So I think you're way ahead of the game. There's a quote that I love from Nancy Blair, who's a decorator, and it says, never turn down an antique, even if it clashes. If it was your grandmother's and it's pretty, take it. Someday you'll be glad. And that's exactly how I feel. I think antiques are made to last, you know, through time, made to last through time, have lasted through time. I don't know, they're well made, they're pretty, they're interesting. We don't have that same craftsmanship and quality, unfortunately, nowadays. And a lot of times you can even find antiques at antique malls or at thrift stores on Craigslist, whatever, and you can get a way better deal than you can on something that's brand new and it's much nicer, even if it does need a little restoration. So I say, that's awesome you have antiques. I think it's a really great place to start. I think every room needs an heirloom quality, I wanna call it. So you literally have these heirlooms in your room. I think that's fantastic. I love mixing in things that aren't going to clash. Like you don't have to go crazy, but I think Lucite is excellent. Lucite acrylic, it has this sort of feminine quality, it has a lightness to it, it looks almost see-through, and a lot of times you can get a sort of antique vibe, like the ghost chairs by Philippe Stark, and then everybody knocked them off. I mean, you can get them on Overstock. If you literally Google that, ghost chairs, you will get a million, or ghost chair knockoff. Sorry, Philippe Stark. But you can find a ton of them. I think they're really cute. They're sort of in a French shape, and they're fantastic to sort of mix in with that antique look. The peekaboo console, now there's a coffee table, there's also side tables, but this console is my everything. It is from CB2, it's a little bit pricey, it's almost $400, but it's really well made when you get it, it's so sturdy. I've used them in so many client projects, they don't really scratch easily. You can get cheaper versions, they're not the CB2 peekaboo table, but if you look on Overstock and Amazon, but they're not going to be the same quality. I've seen one that was so similar from HomeGoods actually, but it like wobbled and it just, it like looked kind of good. I feel like clueless, you know? Like we were like total Monet. Look good from afar, but up close it was a big old mess. 
Another great way to sort of make your space more modern is to bring in modern artwork. Now you can do a gallery wall, you can do very graphic, um, typography type stuff. I think um, Urban Outfitters has a ton of really cool prints like that, art.com. You could paint a giant canvas black and just sort of lean it up there in the background. I think chrome frames, bringing in like minimalistic kind of chrome and shapes like that that aren't competing necessarily with something that's more ornate and has these like Queen Anne legs or whatever your antiques are, but they just sort of add to it and pop off of it. I'm actually going to be doing a modern art kind of DIY tutorial coming up really soon that would probably work really well for this. But I mean, you can go on Pinterest and just Google like DIY modern art and you can find a ton of options. So I think that that's really the way to go, in my opinion, is Lucite, Chrome, Modern Art, mix it with those antiques, girl, and you will be happy, I promise. And then we wanna see pictures, and we wanna know all about it. <laughs> and our third question comes from Kennedy Toye. I don't know, it looks very French and fabulous. I'm not sure how to say it, but Kennedy, thank you. And she wrote, at Mary Elizabeth, moving into this apartment, how do I create a nice flow having everything in one room and use bohemian decor? Well, first off, I wanna commend you on the layout. I think you've done a really good job of sort of separating, I like to call them vignettes, and having like different sort of areas in your space. I love that you have that bedroom very distinctly over there, and then you almost have your little living area there. Even though it's one space, I love how you've separated it. That said, I think you just need to cozy it up it's all about layers and just sort of adding it on. Your bed area, I think it could be significantly cozier. I'd love to see, you know, a blanket over the end of the bed, maybe a couple toss pillows. You should have some sort of bedside table where you have a little lamp, you can have a glass of water, whatever you need right there. Since it is a small space, it might be a great time to use a either a dresser there and still have it be a side table or a desk if you want to also have that be your workspace because you can share your desk lamp with your bedside lamp, so it kind of does double duty. The next area is sort of your sofa area. Again, I think it's about cozying it up, especially with bohemian decor. I think layering and adding fun things, like, ooh, going back to the bedroom, you know, it might be really cool to have hanging above your bed, and it could be kind of simple. A dream catcher. Now that's really bohemian and really cool. You can get something oversized and really beautiful to hang there. I think that could be really cool. Just because it's bohemian, you can do a lot of colors if that's what you're into. You can also do all white and just have layers of different whites and creams and sheepskins and cozy blankets. And I just think that that would be really cozy. Back to the sofa, same thing. Let's get you some more toss pillows. Have them on both sides, have it be cozy, throw a blanket over it, throw a sheepskin over it. Also give some contrast from your sofa and your coffee table from being the same color. It would also be great to do some sort of rug in there. Ikea has interesting rugs. You could do like a plain like jute rug. You could even layer something else over that. And then you need artwork. So whether it's one big piece or you do a gallery wall, I think you should have something above your sofa there. So that would be what I would do with your space. And again, when you do it, if you do it, whatever progress you made, we wanna see it and absolutely applaud you on the layout. I think that's looking amazing and that's one of the biggest parts. Now you just get to layer and fluff and make it pretty. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this round of Ask Mary. You guys can always tweet me, hashtag Ask Mary, at Mary Elizabeth, anything you wanna know. It doesn't have to be decor related. It just kind of worked out this way this time, um, and you guys have a lot of questions like that from me, but literally, I'm an open book. So I love you guys so much, and thank you so much for um, following me and subscribing, and if you're not subscribed, you can do that now. You can like this video, you can share this video, and you can comment as well, and um, love you guys. I hope you're having a fantastic week.